We live in an age of revolutionary technology. People understand this now intuitively, that their iPhones are going to get better and smaller and faster with every iteration. We understand that Moore's law suggests that computing power will double every two years. But what fewer people understand is that there very well could be, and very likely is, an equivalent of Moore's law for biology. And what that means is that our biology will prove to be just as hackable as our information technology systems. We think of our human, of our being, as something that's fixed. But now that we understand the genome, now that we understand the mechanics of what makes a human being, we are increasingly going to be able to manipulate those mechanics. In the first phase, we're going to do it to eliminate terrible genetic diseases that have plagued our ancestors for millennia. But the very same technologies that allow us to address these genetic diseases will also open the door to, at first, genetic selection through in vitro fertilization and embryo selection, and ultimately to the manipulation and the genetic manipulation and ultimately enhancement of our future children. And this will be done at very early stages of life prior to implantation of early stage embryos in the mother. And this is going to have a fundamental impact on how we think about what it means to be a human being, how we live, how we think about fertility and aging and even death. Most people are very, very uncomfortable with a number of issues um, that are raised in the, the biotech and the biology revolutions, and we should be because these issues are extremely challenging. And the issue that we face is that while the science is advancing exponentially, the regulatory framework is only advancing glacially. And there's a mismatch between what the science can do, how it's regulated, and how the public understands this new technology and this revolutionary science. So what we need to do is to have a broad, inclusive dialogue on the future of human genetic engineering, not just among the scientists, because the scientists understand this quite well, but among everybody, all kinds of groups, all kinds of people, people of faith, NGOs, civil society groups, if the world, if many people around the world have been very uncomfortable with genetically modified crops, even after 30 years of research has shown that GMO crops are no worse for people to consume than regular crops, but still people are very uncomfortable because something about GMO crops feels uncomfortable. And if people are uncomfortable with GM crops, imagine how they're going to feel about genetically modified humans. But genetically modified humans are coming very, very soon. That's why we need to have what I'm calling a species-wide dialogue on the future of human genetic engineering.